Bonjour everyone, Bentuf here today for a new video in which we're going to take a look at the RAM Panzer two months after its release. If you remember closely when I did a review on that tank the first time it was introduced, I told you that yes, it was a good tank, kind of, that could have its perks, its own original perks, such as the thing it has at the front, but most importantly, it was way too expensive. When you take a look at it, it cost me around 250 euros to get, which is way overpriced considering we're talking about a regular tier a premium tank and not even as broken as a smasher or even an annihilator and well i'm saying it's not broken simply because when you take a look at the statistics they are good without being too op what i mean by that is that the gun is just excellent there is nothing else to say the aim time is crazy the gun dispersion is average for the dpm it's pretty good the reload time is 5.5 seconds you also have a good penetration sitting at 210 which is among the greatest if i'm not mistaken out of all the tier 8 mediums because usually it turns around 190 200 and for the lowest 170 but the average damage is still the same as usual 225 per shot nine degrees of gun depression and most importantly that little thing at the front that i already forgot the name of that i'm gonna kindly ask you to tell me what it is in the comments main problem of that tank that i did not cite in my first video is that it feels sluggish 42 kilometers per hour top speed is definitely not enough considering you are a premium tank on top of that your average speed will be only around 34 kilometers per hour due to the fact that well you are extremely heavy especially with that plate right there but the biggest downside of that tank is that it would have been a crazy all down tank and it would justify its price if it went out for 200 euros if Wargaming removed the cupola out of it. But having that big thing right there completely annihilates the purpose of all down. You have a tank that is made for all down, but Wargaming decided to put a huge weak spot on top of this. It's just. It makes no sense. And the thing is, in battle, two months after it's released, everyone is aware of that weak spot and everyone will try to get it. And the thing is, by doing this, it completely destroys the purpose of that tank. Why wouldn't you prefer a tank that has more mobility and doesn't need to hold down, such as an AMX CDC or anything else, rather than a one that is supposed to roll but effectively can't do it at all? And well, to know how this impacted the playstyle, I think the best would be to turn on the replays. So let's not lose so much time jump directly into it. For this one, I decided to pick a game where I was bottom tier, not that much because there is only two tier 9 and the rest is tier 8, but at least it shows you how that tank would perform in its weakest form, which is a good thing in my opinion. So you see that, well, already 3090 is climbing up the hill as we just made around maybe 50, 100 meters, and it already feels sluggish. Just take a look at that on the top of the hill. You don't even go as fast as the fastest heavy tanks at tier 10, at tier 8. Which is kind of a shame because, well, you are a medium tank and as a medium tank you expect to turn to go as fast as a medium. So, well, at least do we have the armor for us? Yes and no. Yes, because if people are trying to shoot at you anywhere else than your turret, you should be able to bounce. But no, because when they have a little bit of brain cells, they just have to sneak a shot straight into your cupola because they know it's literally paper and you will get penetrated. And the thing is, all of those little annoying things about the tank makes it not a good tank to acquire, in my opinion, two months after. Maybe it was good when you had it the two first months of its release because people didn't really know how to act against that tank. But now that being... Let's say that... The shiny, the shiny state of the tank is over. On top of that, I feel like Wargaming overpriced it because they baited us and they did well because they actually baited us into thinking that the little shovel, shovel at, the, at the front will effectively bounce shots and that people will struggle penetrating you. I think that this is pretty much how Wargaming intended to advertise the tank. And even if it worked in practice because some people bought it, in the end it was just plain lying because there is nothing that protects you. I mean, yes, the lower part can penetrate you if you are taking some shots frontally. I'm not going to say anything contrary. But as most of the time you're supposed to be in all down with this kind of tanks because you feature 9 degrees of gun depression, the shovel will literally never be used. And so the effectiveness of it is reduced to zero to maybe one percent some situations occasionally will allow you to use it 
So of course, the only thing you need to rely on is your turret, and here you have a big problem that could pull up. Just take a look at what's happening right now. Instead of staying straight in front of my opponents like a good all down tanks would do, like a Grand Wagon or something like that, here I'm forced to move all ways. I'm always moving, always on the move in order to make it harder for my opponents to sneak a shot on my cupola. And you see through the entire replay that it saved me quite a lot of shells. It's not gonna save me from death, obviously, because, well, after all, you can't save yourself all day long. But, well, I did my best and I tried to wiggle a little bit. Unfortunately, here, I went a little bit too far and exposed my hull. And, well, when you have the choice between a small cupola that is moving and a big-ass hull that is not moving, you pick the hull and you penetrate and you would be right to shoot the hull. So now, the T-34 is over, thanks to my accurate gun, because after all, the aim time is really good with this tank, even if you don't feature the best gun depression. And now we're trying to get the Yak Tiger. And as you can see, I'm keeping myself moving. I'm not stopping. You see the Ice 3 Defender? He was trying to aim at me, and as I was moving all ways, uh, all the way up and down, well, he missed his shot. This is what you need to do with this tank. If you don't, you will get penetrated, you will get frustrated, and, well, you will probably either sell it or regret buying it. Of course, uh, talking about selling and buying, even if you don't like the tank, do not sell premiums. It's completely stupid to get... Because, well, if you sell premium, uh, you will get only credits for it, whereas if it's a collectible, I could tell you, yes, sell it. But selling a premium is completely useless because what you're going to get in reward uh, as a reward for... Um, or selling is, is credits. You don't care about credits. You can make them easily by playing a premium. So don't bother. Please do not sell it, even if you don't like it. So Well, right now, I would say that this tank in the current meta is just an average one. It doesn't have anything to make it shine. Yes, it has that thing protecting the lower part of the hull at the front that can work effectively if you angle the tank properly. But that's it. And to be fair, it's not a good use because if people can't penetrate here, they will just shoot at your cupola. So in the end, this tank is nowadays not worth it. Tell me, maybe you disagree with what I say. Tell me in the comments. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And personally, guys, I'm going to see you soon for a new video. Bye.